Let's discuss the concept of a currency swap. Now in a previous video I discussed interest rate swaps and interest rate swaps are relatively simple because in most cases you don't need to exchange the principal it's just exchanging the cash flows a fixed rate for floating rate. Now this is going to be different because we're going to be dealing with two different currencies and we're going to have more options in terms of the possible interest rates or cash flows that are exchanged. Now currency swaps are most often used when companies make cross-border capital investments. So for example, a US parent company wants to finance a project undertaken by its subsidiary in France and they're going to use the project proceeds to pay the interest in the principal. Um, what are their options? They could borrow in the US and convert that to euros, but that exposes the company to exchange rate risk. They could borrow in France, but the rate available there may not be as good as it is in the US because the subsidiary is relatively unknown. The third possibility is to find, find a counterparty and set up a currency swap. Now, currency swaps are more complicated than single currency agreements because cash flows are denominated in different monetary units. Therefore, the principal amounts are usually exchanged at the origin and at the maturity dates of the contract. So, because two currencies are involved, interest rates defining the transaction can be expressed on a fixed or floating rate basis for either or both currencies. So there are four possible cases. You could have a fixed US rate and a fixed foreign rate. You could have a floating US rate and a fixed foreign rate. You could have a fixed US rate and a floating foreign rate. Or you could have a floating US rate and a floating foreign rate. Now the most common is a fixed foreign rate for a floating US rate based on LIBOR. And normally a currency swap takes place because a company has a comparative advantage borrowing locally. What does that mean? That means that they can borrow at a relatively lower rate than their counterparty can at their, um, in their local market. So let's take a look at this picture here. So company A would issue securities in the local market. Company B would issue securities in their local market. And you can see the cash flows. Company A would pay, we're going to put a bank in between as an intermediary. Company A would pay the foreign rate to the swap bank and receive the local rate. So these are going to cancel out essentially. The company B is going to pay the foreign rate to the swap bank and receive its local rate. And so these will cancel out. So essentially company B will be getting the rate issued by company A in their local market. Company A will be getting the rate that company B gets in their local market. All right, it's a little confusing. Let's look at an actual numerical example. We have too much issue local, issue local. So consider the following example. Suppose you have a US multinational corporation that wants to finance a $40 million euro expansion of a French plant. Well, they could borrow dollars in the US where, where they're well known and exchange the dollars for euros. But as we mentioned before, this is going to give them exchange rate risk. Okay, financing a euro project um, with dollars means that you know they have to exchange the money to euros and they have to exchange them back to dollars, interest rate risk. They could borrow uh, euros in the international market, but they might pay a premium because they're not as well known. All right, if they can find a French multinational corporation with mirror image financing needs, they may both benefit from a swap. So they find a French company that wants to borrow essentially the same amount of money but wants it in US dollars. So 
let's consider that the spot exchange rate is $1.30 per euro and the US firm needs to find a French firm wanting to fi finance a dollar borrowing amount uh, in the amount of $52 million, right? 40, 40 million euros at the dollar thirty rate is fifty two million dollars. So here we have, you know, we're trying to find two firms where they match up. U.S. company wants to borrow forty million euros. French firm wants to f borrow fifty two million dollars. All right, if they're fortunate enough to find each other, let's consider we have these two firms A and B. A is the U.S. company and B is the French-based multinational. So company A can borrow at an 8% rate in the U.S. market and can borrow at 7% um, if they're borrowing in euros. Company B, if it wants to borrow in the U.S. market, pays a 9% rate, but company B pays a 6% percent rate when they borrow um, in their local markets in euros. So you can see that each one has an advantage. Actually, B has an absolute advantage in borrowing euros and company A has an absolute advantage in borrowing dollars. Alright, so let's see what happens here. Here's firm A. They borrow the $52 million um, in their local market where they're able to borrow at this 8% rate. Firm B is the French firm. It borrows 40 million euros at this 6% rate. Okay, so they're each borrowing where they borrow cheapest. What firm A is going to do is firm A is going to pay the swap bank um, a 6% rate on these euros and the swap bank is just going to pass that along to firm B. So you can see 6% in terms of euros goes to the swap bank and then 6% goes to firm B. Firm B on the other hand is paying 8% in terms of US dollars to the swap bank and the swap bank is passing it on to firm A. So you can see that what happens here? Firm A's payment, the 8% in dollars that it borrowed, is canceled out because it's paying 8%, but it's receiving 8%. So now it's essentially paying a 6% rate on euros. Here, firm B is paying 6% to borrow these 40 million euros, but they are also receiving 6%. So that cancels this out. So firm B winds up paying an 8% dollar rate. Firm A winds up paying a 6% euro rate. All right. What are the annual cash flows? Well, 8% of this 52 million for firm B is 4.16 million. For firm A, firm A is paying 6% um, on the 40 million dollar 40 million euros so it's paying 2.4 million euros in this example the swap bank isn't making any money all right we certainly could have modified this so that the swap bank gets gets a cut which certainly they would all right so what's our net position here a is borrowing at this 6% euro rate B is borrowing at the 8% dollar rate, right? And here you can see that had they borrowed, had company B gone to the U.S. market and borrowed in dollars, they would have paid 9%. They're saving a percent. Here, um, if, B, if A had borrowed in France in euros, they would have paid 7%. So each company is 1% better off. So this swap allows both of the firms to benefit from uh, borrowing where they have an advantage 
and and swapping with a firm that borrows where they have an advantage. So in this case, the U.S. firm borrows in the U.S. and borrows in dollars. Uh, firm B borrows in France and borrows euros, and they exchange the cash flows, and both of the firms are better off. So this is a, a relatively simple example of a currency swap, but it shows you that there can be real advantages to firms by using this rather than just going out and buying foreign currency.